The top 10 most powerful ninja in the Naruto series, that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to be talking about the most powerful characters up until the latest recent episode slash chapter of Boruto. So this list is going to stay pretty relevant for a while now. I want to note that this list is going to be still somewhat subjective. Nobody has the definitive list of top 10 most powerful characters. If they tell you that, they are lying. The only person who knows that as a fact is Kishimoto himself. Coming in at number 10, we've got Nagato, and the reason he's on this list is because it took a lot of life and overall effort to stop this guy, simply because he was like the first guy introduced with the Renegade in the series, and he mastered the Six Paths technique. Even though his body was completely destroyed and he was there in the background controlling all these different paths as puppets, he was still a big threat, and had information not come to Naruto in the Hidden Lee Village in time, who knows what kind of damage he could have done. The gravitational, the summoning, the absorption abilities of the Deva, the animal, the Preta path respectively could cause insurmountable levels of damage. And it's important to know that while all the paths have their own unique abilities, one can bring back the dead, the other can make your opponent meet his end with the force, it's important to note that when you bring them all together, they're that much more powerful because they can use their abilities in conjunction with each other. At number 9, we've got Doneri Otsutsuki. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it was really hard to put this guy on the list before, like, Itachi, for instance, because I really don't like Doneri as a character. But unfortunately, because he was born in the Otsutsuki clan, and he was one of its most powerful members, at the very least introduced in the series thus far, he did land himself on this list. Yes, he was disgraced by Naruto, but he still had a dojutsu, the Tenseigon, which was capable of literally pulling the moon itself towards the earth. It's not very many people that could do something like that in the story. He also had near 360 degrees x-ray vision because of the Byakugan and a chakra mode which basically enhanced all of his abilities. So he had every single perk that you pretty much need to be a powerful shinobi. It's just that he's kind of stupid and very impatient, which doesn't put him further on this list. If he had the strategy of a Tobirama of a Minato to utilize his abilities in the best way possible, he would be in the top five, but it's like giving a bunch of toys to a kid. You're gonna spoil that kid, and that's exactly what Tonetti is. A spoiled little kid. And while I do see his Tenseigon chakra mode as inferior to the Six Path Sage mode slash Senjutsu, or even Karama chakra mode, right? At the end of the day, he could utilize the Truth Seeking Balls, which have a destructive element to them, which are completely unrivaled. Coming in at number 8, we've got both Indra and Ashura. They're pretty much the original Naruto and Sasuke, Indra being the original Sasuke, Ashura being the original Naruto, and if those two are very high up on this list, I think these two naturally should be on this list as well. They both had extremely large reserves of chakra coming from the Otsutsuki line, and specifically a very strong branch of the Otsutsuki line, Kaguya's branch. This allowed them to both utilize their ability longer than most people, so whereas Itachi had a hard time using his powers in a very efficient way because he had low reserves of chakra, Indra didn't have that problem. He could utilize his complete body Susanoo for a very long time, as well as Amaterasu and other perks. The dude literally took Ninshu and invented Ninjutsu, what every single shinobi to date has used to fight in battle. I mean, Indra created the Shadow Clone and Substitution abilities, which are very useful in battle, and he also mastered very unique forms of, by the way, the Amaterasu, Lightning Release, and even Shisui's Body Flicker technique, which would allow him to move great distances without being traced at all. Ashura, on the other hand, really did feel like a mix of Naruto and Hashirama. He created a very early form of the Rasengan, studying the Tail Beast Ball. He had Six Path Senjutsu slash Sage Mode, so he could utilize Truth Seeking Balls. And if you want to talk that Hashirama DNA, he literally combined Earth and Water Release to use wood release, which is basically what Hashirama is famous for, but this dude did it way back then. And to compete with Indra Susano, by the way, he'd pull out the true several thousand hands. And while it's nowhere near as cool as the Susano, it's not a half ass substitute. I'd definitely rather have that in battle than nothing when fighting the Susano. Coming in at number seven, we've got the god of Shinobi, Hashirama Senju, the first Hokage himself. And really what does it for me in connection to him is his mastery of the wood release. We know if you have wood release, you're an exceptionally powerful individual, but he fully mastered it. Any replications of this ability that we've seen throughout the story really paled in comparison to his. He could create powerful structures to withstand tailed beast balls, and you could just watch Hashirama vs. Madara to get a good idea of what I'm talking about right here. 
And that's really the thing with him is that we've seen him utilize his wood release. Hashirama fully mastered that specific ability. In fact, when he was first introduced, that was like his thing. He also had loads of chakra just like Ashura. Maybe he even had more potent DNA. Coming in at number six, we've got Momoshiki Otsutsuki after absorbing Kinshiki. Now, while I believe Momoshiki was powerful enough alone to be on this list, after he absorbed Kinshiki, he became a literal straight up devil in both abilities and also in appearance. For starters, he had the ability to fly, which a lot of people take that ability for granted, but it literally could, I mean, allow you to escape any situation possible. If things got too bad, he could use space-time ninjutsu, and he also had the staple Byakugan being an Otsutsuki clan member, but what really separated him from the others is his specific Rinnegan, and what his specific Rinnegan in his palm allowed him to do. He could absorb ninjutsu with his right, and then use those said ninjutsu with his left. So literally he could take a tail beast ball and spit it out and it became just as powerful as it was when it was fired off initially and I don't really think there's any problem with that. All he'd have to do is literally store it up. Now, how long he could store it up, we don't know. I am sure there is a limit to that ability, even though he claimed there wasn't, because if there wasn't a limit to that ability, then he'd probably be number one on this list, right? I don't think he could just store up like 50 tail beast bombs and just, you know, fire them off all at once. I think that's a little bit overdoing it. But yeah, the dude's a literal god, and he nearly fought evenly with both Sasuke and Naruto, and it took a lot of Shinobi working together to take those two out, specifically after Momoshiki absorbed his father. He had large chakra reserves, and he could also utilize all five elemental nature transformations, which gave him the ability to use wood release to some degree. Now, I don't think to the extent of Hashirama, but still, just being able to use it is something else. And really, the reason he ain't higher up on this list is because he, he just seemed kind of stupid. Like, he had absolutely no battle sense, and I'm guessing it's not that weird because he'd be flying around with his father from planet to planet just sucking things up. Like, you don't really learn anything like that in terms of fighting. So, he had extremely powerful abilities, but just like Toneri, it's like spoiling a, a little kid with a bunch of toys. In the end, it's spoiled. Coming in at number 5, we got Adult Sasuke, and I recently made a video stating that if he had the Curse Seal still, he'd probably be stronger than Naruto, and by the way, his speeds are so incredible that after Naruto the last, I even claimed that he'd already surpassed Naruto, but then I thought about it again and I realized, especially since we now know that Naruto still has access to high levels of Senjutsu, that he'd still be ahead of Sasuke. What puts him on a high pedestal for stutters isn't a simple Rinnegan, which a couple of users have. What makes his Rinnegan special is, while it grants him similar abilities to other Rinnegan users like the Six Paths technique, we've seen him, by the way, use the Deva Path to create Chibaku Tensei, he has a unique ability, a space-time ninjutsu, which allows him to instantly swap places between two objects in a specific range. As he grew older, this became advanced enough to where he'd be able to travel through dimensions. So, he has the destructive capacity to rival pretty much anybody, but he has the speed and he could travel in ways that literally no one else can unless they're just gods like the Otsutsuki clan, and that's what makes Sasuke so deadly. His mastery of the Sharingan, specifically his EMS with large chakra reserves, also made him an extremely deadly force because of the fact that he could pull out a complete body Susanoo which could easily rival the likes of a tail beast mode, on top of the fact that he had those, you know, never-extinguishable flames called the Amaterasu, which he could spam time and time again. And really what does it about Sasuke and why he's going to be the savior of the world time and time again until he potentially dies in the future of the Boruto series is just his overall intelligence and strategy in battle. I mean, there's been multiple times when you think Sasuke is done, but he's there right back at your throat. And that's because this guy who was, by the way, alive on this list is still owning up his skills to this day. He's still on a journey of repentance while Naruto's there in the office doing paperwork and getting rusty. Coming in at number four, we've got our boy, Naruto Uzumaki, inheritor of Ashura's body, one of the most powerful Jin Shuriki to date, receiving the most powerful tail beast, and he has massive chakra reserves because of it. He had an extremely huge arsenal of weapons, one that at the very least rivaled Sasuke's. He managed to, by the way, create a derivative of the Tail Beast Ball in so many different ways, so many different Rasengan variants. His mastery of the wind release went way beyond that, by the way, being able to combine, you know, Kurama's chakra with the chakra that he had already had, basically mastering this nature transformation. He could eventually create something like the Sixth Path's Ultra Big Ball Rasen Shuriken, which, by the way, was used as a counter against Sasuke's most powerful offensive technique. And he pretty much has all of the other staples on this list, aside from the Dojutsu and the wood release. He has the extremely high levels of Senjutsu, yes, six-path sage mode, of course, he was given half of Hagoromo's chakra. He could utilize 
realized the truth seeking balls on top of the chakra mode which of course had a destructive capacity that was pretty much unmatched anything it touched basically disintegrated and if something's up it's his battle prowess his endurance the fact that kurama jumps to his defense as a shield of course being a gene shooting he comes with his own perks that lands him at number four and i don't think he would be this high up on this list if he didn't develop the relationship that he had with kurama naruto is pretty much pure-hearted and that's one of the reasons that so many blessings have come into his life. Coming in at number three, we've got Ten Tails Jin Shuriki Madara. Yes, Ten Tails Jin Shuriki Madara is more powerful than adult Sasuke and adult Naruto. And I don't want to trigger anybody by saying that, but that's just the truth. And the reason why I'm giving him the Jin Shuriki transformation over Obito is that Obito didn't die with that form. That form ultimately kind of died with Madara. It was even stated by Hagoromo himself, who's higher up on this list, that he was getting close in power to Hagaromo, and that's because he's literally the equivalent of both, like, Naruto and Sasuke together. At the very least, the powers that Hagaromo gave those two. If you combine them together, that's pretty much close to where Madara was, which is why they had to work together to defeat the guy, even though in the end, he was disgraced by Zetsu. In fact, at the height of his legacy, he couldn't conventionally have been beaten. I mean, to be honest with you, if you put Madara Ten Tails Yunchuriki up against Kaguya, it would actually be a close fight in my eyes. He was so powerful that Kishimoto did not know how those two were going to defeat him when it came down to writing, you know, Madara's defeat. Like, Kishimoto didn't know how to do it, which is why I feel like a lot of people felt as if the Zetsu thing was an ass pull when he came up right behind him and literally stuck his arm through his chest. He had 100 years of battle experience fighting wars with the Senju clan. He had the Rinnegan and the EMS, which came with staples like the Suzuno. He could, of course, use Chibaku Tensei. He could bring meteors from the sky and literally crash them into the surface. Dude literally became a god, and he had incredible speeds as well, being able to react to the Flying Thunder God technique and by the way, he even survived one of the most powerful beatings of all time from my guy. Uh, who wear that sage mode though? <laughs> Coming in at number two, we've got Hagaromo Otsutsuki, the Sage of the Six Paths. What makes this man special is that he bypassed reality. Um, for instance, the Izanagi is a derivative of the creation of all things. Now, what is the creation of all things, you ask? It doesn't even really have a definition. It's just the ability to create something out of nothing, to you know, create form of things, to, you know, heal things that just generally shouldn't have been able to have been realistically healed. Passing is spiritual energy from one being to another. Now, there's other characters in the series that display this ability as a result of coming from a Hagaromo's line, but what made him special is the fact that he originated that power, and again, if we learn more about him and we saw him more on screen, we would see truly how amazing he was, because I believe in a battle against someone like Hagaromo, I think it would just be impossible to defeat someone like him, unless of course you're even more powerful, and as far as we're concerned, there's only one person I can think of on this list more powerful than him. So yeah, he had staples like the Mangekyo Sharingan, which allowed him to use like the Susano to deflect the power of things such as Tail Beast Balls. He had the Rinnegan, which gave him extraordinary power, utilizing the Outer Path. Dude could revive the dead. He had extremely high levels of Senjutsu. Again, it all originated back to him, so I believe he has the most pure sensing abilities. And then, of course, he also had the Truth Seeking Balls. Again, maybe I'd even put him at number one if we just see more of his abilities. But unfortunately, we still know very little about this guy. Coming in at number one, we've got Kaguya Otsutsuki, the mother of all chakra, the one that became one with the Ten Tails. She literally merged with that thing, and she was the first wielder of chakra on Earth. Now, some of you guys are gonna be like, okay, she's special, right? She could uh, do interstellar travel, she's got the Byakugan, she's got the third eye, but what separates her really from the other Otsutsuki clan members? So, the Otsutsuki clan members are gonna be on this list naturally because they're the aliens with these amazing powers that human beings didn't have until, of course, they came and they blessed us with, with sex. Literally, they procreated with us. I know it's gonna sound kinda of bad, but she was a lot smarter than them. I mean, if you think about Zetsu's plan to ultimately bring Kaguya back and how all of that happened and all the characters that contributed to that plan, I mean, it's pretty genius. And while Naruto and Sasuke ended up sealing her, they could not defeat her conventionally. Her power was just that great. Her chakra reserves are unrivaled by far. She has expansive truth-seeking balls, so not those little miniature ones. I'm talking about big black balls. All right, that sounded kind of wrong, but she had the destructive capacity, but it was the third eye that really separated her from the other characters because she could teleport from one point to another within all of these dimensions. And again, interstellar travel is cool, but when you're in a fight 
against, you know, characters on Earth, being able to, you know, change the environment and then, you know, transport to where nobody can hit you and you're there trying to kill them from long range and you could do it ultimately and everybody got to work together to just survive and seal you. They can't even defeat you conventionally. That's why she's number one on the list. On top of that, she had Kimimaru's bone abilities, which were very destructive. But yeah, maybe one day she will be surpassing the story by another Otsutsuki, possibly. So with all that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this top 10. Again, you might disagree with how some things were ordered. Maybe you'd even want another character on this list, but it's pretty legit, all right? I'm, I'm pretty close to the mark. I did my research. Though if I am wrong and y'all need to check me, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I want to hear your guys' opinions. Tell me your top 10. How would you order things? And with all that being said, have an awesome day.